All right, today uh, what we're going to look at a little bit are these uh, what are called hyperbolic functions. And uh, first of all, I just want to start with um, looking at why they're called uh, hyperbolic functions. Hyperbolic functions, uh, kind of interesting, they, uh, they involve expressions involving uh, two exponential expressions. And so uh, <clears throat> e to the x and e to the minus x, but yeah, so that really has nothing to do with a hyperbola. <clears throat> what I've got here on the right uh, graph here is a hyperbola, x squared minus y squared equals one. So I'll explain how that ties in here, but I did want to start, um, interestingly enough, with the unit circle, which we use in trig because uh, of the fact that, yeah, on a unit circle, if you go to uh, any particular point on that circle, the x value represents the cosine of this angle theta <coughs> that I've got uh, drawn here. And then the y value, as we know, is uh, uh, equal to the sine of that angle theta. Um, <coughs> just, the way it, just the way it works for unit circles and trig functions. Well, turns out hyperbolic functions have a similar relationship, but to the hyperbola. If I draw in this angle theta, or, or come to this point and then uh, think about that angle theta to that uh, uh, point, uh, from the point to the origin there, <clears throat> turns out that x comma y value is equivalent to, turns out, the hyperbolic cosine, which is uh, written this way, of theta. And then the y value is equivalent to the hyperbolic sine of theta, which is written that way. So as you can see there, we're just going to put an extra h on our what we know as the regular trig functions. But these are hyperbolic functions. Um, and so that's why they're called hyperbolic, because of this relationship uh, to this unit hyperbola that I've got drawn here. Um, yeah, that's what that shape is called, by the way, in case you've forgotten. Um, <clears throat> that's hyperbola is the, the shape here that, give, that we get for that particular equation. Um, but we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. I just wanted to explain the reason behind this name. <clears throat> all right, so let's talk, first of all, here about, uh, let's just define the uh, hyperbolic sign which I've already mentioned, is denoted by S-I-N-H, and, and usually pronounced uh, the shorthand, instead of hyperbolic sign, the shorthand is uh, cinch. I don't, it doesn't have a C in it, but, um, or a T, <laughs> T-C-H, but that's the way it's pronounced, cinch. Cinch of X, I'll just use X here instead of theta, or, more accustomed to, to that, and that's more the way we'll see it um, here. But <clears throat> like I said, we're just going to kind of define it and then talk about the calculus stuff of it, the derivative and um, a little bit of integration, <clears throat> antiderivative, of course. But it's interesting that, yeah, there's applications that utilize these hyperbolic functions and uh, and so we want to explore those a little bit so you know a little bit about them when you encounter them. <clears throat> um, anyway, all right, so here's, here's the definition of cinch. Like I said, all of these involve e to the x, e to the minus x. Well, it turns out uh, cinch is e to the x minus e to the minus x all divided by 2. Okay? Seemingly kind of random. We put those together, uh, e to the x and e to the minus x, but <clears throat> for whatever reason, it, uh, it comes up in applications and, and some interesting, uh, they're just some interesting, well, the derivative and stuff, uh, connections and things like that, but <clears throat> so, yeah, you know, you just plug in numbers, uh, x can be any real number, of course, you know, 
so that we could think of it as an angle, but radians. So we can use any x value that we uh, choose. Let's just do, think of, just choose a number, choose. Let's do the cinch of three. <clears throat> well, what is it? Well, it's e to the three minus e to the minus three divided by, um, that's its value. Now, numerically, that doesn't probably do a whole lot for you, but um, just substitute it in, that gives us our value. And so, you know, if you want an approximation of that, um, that would be approximately. So, uh, on my paper here, uh, e to the third, just punch that in. Mine says 30.0855, approximately, minus e to the minus three, which is not a very big number, if you think about it. 0 0.049787, and then divide that by two, you're going to get approximately uh, 10.179, uh, 0179. If I did, uh, <coughs> did all that correctly, I'm going to go ahead and check it. I haven't done that in a while, so e to the third. Oh, 20. Ah, I didn't read my notes right. I'm glad I did that. It is 20.0855, and then e to the minus, oops, e raise that to the minus third. Yeah, that, that one got right. So subtract those, divide by two, you get 10. Yeah, that makes sense too. I would also say on the uh, TI-84, 8384, <clears throat> there's not a short cut button on the display here front of your calculator, but it does have the hyperbolic functions built in. They are all under the catalog. Uh, if you go to the catalog, you can find the hyperbolic functions um, listed. Uh, the TIE4 is doing an alphabetical order, so just go down the S's. And you'll find the cinch function, and then you could uh, <coughs> check, check to see that they want you to you know, write this out. I think there's a couple in the homework. You have to write that out. I don't know if they want you around it, but I just did that to give you a feel for what, what it actually is. All right. And then um, the other one that I want to find here is the hyperbolic cosine. <clears throat> it turns out the hyperbolic cosine is, uh, it does look kind of like it. It's pronounced kind of like a book, kosh of X, or kosh, some, uh, some may pronounce it with a long O, but the kosh of X, hyperbolic cosine, <clears throat> turns out that is e to the X plus e to the minus X divided by two. And with those two, you actually can, can get all the other ones, just like on, uh, on the regular, on the trig functions, you know, we can define this function in terms of other functions, and actually we can define or uh, write all of the other trig functions in terms of sine and cosine. Well, that's that's kind of the way I look at it for now. I mean, we can uh, certainly define it with e to the x and e to the minus x. For example, uh, the hyperbolic tangent uh, follows from these two. Well, what is, uh, what is tangent? Just regular tangent. It's sine over cosine, right? Well, it turns out hyperbolic tangent is um, the cinch divided by the cosh, hyperbolic cosine. And uh, FYI, that's usually pronounced tanch. Again, I don't know why they add an extra C or some extra stuff in there, but I guess just to uh, <coughs> delineate it from regular tangent. Um, but in tanch, tanch, hyperbolic tangent, yeah, it is just like uh, a tangent. Sine over cosine, tanch is cinch over cosh. Uh, <coughs> so the rest follow. Um, hyperbolic secant, seech, as they Sometimes refer to it. Um, yeah, that is 
reciprocal of the, the Kosh. Um, Kosich, hyperbolic cosecant, is uh, reciprocal of the cinch. And then what's that? Cot cotanch. <clears throat> yeah, they usually pronounce that. Uh, uh, oops. Got my X on that one. Um, yeah, they usually go with cotanch on that. Uh, is how we'll refer to it. By its nickname, I guess we could call it. Cotanch is uh, usually the way we go with that. <coughs> Cosiege, cotanch. So, but it's the yeah, it's the reciprocal tanch, or also um, that would be the cos uh, kosh over cinch. those with the e to the x, but you'll, you'll notice here, if you put the cinch over the cosh, uh, def define uh, the definition of those, by cancellation what you wind up with is you wind up with e to the x minus e to the minus x over e to the x plus e to the minus x. Um, the twos will actually cancel there. So <clears throat> anyway, yeah, you can define these all in terms of e to the x's and e to the minus x's, but um, for you had to calculate one because I said uh, the hyperbolic functions are on the calculator TIE fours. Well, just like sine, cosine, and tangent, those are on the TIE fours, but the others you have to uh, use the reciprocals and things like that, sines and cosines, to get the others. Tangent and sine are. I mean, Secant is one over cosine. Yeah. <clears throat> so you have to do similar to evaluate on the calculator. Um, do those. So uh, yeah. So for example, I do have one in mind here. All right. So let's say we want to siege. <coughs> Hyperbolic secant of just one, and uh, get that. Expression well, um, I guess <coughs> we needed to. We could remember the cinch and kosh probably easier than the others, but yeah, the cinch is just a reciprocal of the kosh, and so I'm talking here for cinch of one. It's one over the kosh evaluated at one, which, like I said, that just means the reciprocal of kosh. And so you just flip that over, so it'd be 2 over e to the 1 plus e to the minus 1. That would be what the siege of 1 would be. It's just a reciprocal of the cosh, so just flip that over. But anyway, all right, okay? All right, well, <clears throat> now, of course, this is being a uh, calculus 2 class, we want to talk about derivatives and intervals. That's ultimately where we want to go with this. Talk about some calculus of this stuff. <clears throat> well, okay. Turns out it's pretty nice, actually. And really, it's even better than the trig functions, uh, turns out. But let's just go through one here just to uh, show you how it works and how we do this. Okay. All right. So. I want you to know what's the derivative of cosh, hyperbolic cosine. Well, <clears throat> if we get to the nitty gritty of it, that would of course be, and I just erased it, didn't I? That would be the derivative of that e to the x, e to the minus x expression for cosh. Those I know about now, that we talked about a little bit about the exponentials. I know about the derivatives of those, and so I can figure out what the derivative of cosh is by going through that. You don't have to do this every time. 
because you'll see the payoff at the end. All right, so uh, <clears throat> we know that cosh is um, e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2. All right, so I want the derivative of that. So if I d dx, take the derivative here to get the d dx of cosh. All right, so how do we get the derivative of that? Well, not so hard because um, essentially here, what we've, uh, what we can do, um, the the two is just kind of a, it's a constant divided by two. I'm saying, and so the top's just a, a sum. So really, it just amounts to well, what's the derivative of, the, of those two? Well. Derivative of e to the x is very, very, very nice. It's e to the x. e to the x derivative of e to the x. Derivative of e to the minus x, well, that's just a little bit of chain rule, I guess, um, you might say. Remember, if you've got something other than x to the power, e to a power, you do, uh, <clears throat> I don't think I've written this way, but uh, if you've got e to the power, the derivative is, um, got e to a power uh, expression involving x, this is called a function of x, what you have to do is, yeah, e to the f of x, then you have to do the derivative of the power. <coughs> One way to write that. So, the derivative back to the e to the minus x, e to the minus x, the derivative is e to the minus x, but then you have to multiply by the derivative of the power, which is minus 1. Not too bad. Then if we simplify that just a little bit, that's e to the x minus e to the minus x, is it not? Minus one time. Well, what is that? Isn't that what we call the hyperbolic sign? Yeah, let's talk about hyperbolic sign. So the derivative of cosh, turns out, is cinch. <laughs> yeah, so much like the trig functions, cosh and it turns out cinch, the derivative of cinch is cosh, so, and actually, that's even nicer than the trig functions because what don't we have? Don't have the minus sign. Um, for cosh, the derivative is just positive cinch, and so there, there are no, uh, <coughs> uh, the cosh is positive cinch, um, and the derivative of the cinch, we can do the same thing for cinch, but Go, uh, go through the uh, development of it, but what you find is cinch, the derivative is, it's cosh. It's not even negative cosh, it's just cosh. And so in a sense, that's, uh, that's nicer than the trig functions, but it is analogous. Um, the derivative of cosh is cinch, and the derivative of cinch is cosh, so you don't have to remember which one has the negative. It's, uh, neither one, they're both positive. Um, <coughs> Let me just write up here these derivatives, the other derivatives of the other hyperbolic ones. The derivative of the tanch is, he guesses, yeah, it is seach squared. Um, very nicely, just like tangent is secant squared, the derivative of tanch is secant squared. Um, now, as far as the others, uh, others go, those are where your negative signs come in. We can show these, but save a little time here. I'll just tell you. Yeah, the cosech is negative cosech times uh, cotanch. Um, <clears throat> there is siege. Now this one is kind of the one that's not as maybe as nice as uh, its analogous trig function, but yeah, because secant x, the derivative of secant x what? The derivative of secant x is secant x tangent of x. Well, it turns out siege of x is negative siege of x times the tanch of x. And so that's, I guess, that's the trade-off. Cosh is positive cinch derivative of 
but Seach is, uh, is the negative of Seach times Tange. And then uh, last but not least, that would leave us what, uh, Cotange? Coth, Coth. Uh, you just say cotangent. Cotangent, yeah, it is uh, the negative of the cosec squared. So, all in all, not too bad. Very, like I said, very analogous to the truth function. So, if you know those, you shouldn't have any trouble with these. Remember <laughs> these, but um, anyway. All right, so let's let's just go through a couple of uh, examples here. <coughs> Of some derivatives. All right, so we got y is uh, cosh of square root of 1 plus x squared. What's the derivative? Well, just like other derivatives, um, yeah, if you've got a square root there, you probably want to write that as the 1 half power, so it's cosh of uh, 1 plus x squared to 1 half power. And of course that <coughs> then kind of leads us to uh, how we do the derivative. And of course the derivative here is by chain rule. Got to do the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And uh, actually this one's even got uh, a couple of things. But <coughs> yeah, start with the derivative of the outside. So derivative of the outside, well that's the cosh, which right there it is. Uh, the derivative of the cosh is the cinch. <clears throat> the derivative of the outside is the cinch. But what happens in chain rule to the inside when we do the derivative of the outside? The inside stays the same. And so that stays 1 plus x squared to 1 half, or right at the square root of 1 plus x squared, either way. But <clears throat> then we have to do the derivative of the inside. Well, the inside here actually. You see what we've got here on the inside? That's one of our infamous inside of the insides, or it has an inside of the inside. <clears throat> and so there's a multiple chain rule going on here. All right, so one plus x squared, that's inside of the inside. Um, <clears throat> the inside uh, part, like I said, I got a circle there, is one plus x squared one half, but yeah, so we have to do the derivative of that one half uh, power. So bring down the power, leave the one plus x squared the same, and then subtract one to get the new power. But then we have to do the inside of the inside derivative, which that would be two x, wouldn't it? Uh, <clears throat> so remember, we had a few of those back in Cap One uh, where we had an inside to the inside. So yeah, just have to keep everything straight. So this is a good example of uh, remind you of that. <clears throat> uh, as far as cleaning it up, yeah, we would probably, like I said, go ahead and write that uh, back as the square root of 1 plus x squared. And here, well, the 2's would cancel, so we just line it with an x. Um, plus x squared minus a half times the x. We could, uh, you know, throw things around a little more. Flip that to the bottom, make it a square root in the denominator. Um, that would be an okay answer. I'm okay with that. But we also could, uh, yeah, we could leave the, uh, the x and the cinch stuff on top here. And then, like I said, flip that over, make it a positive one half square root then in the denominator. That's another form of the answer. That would be probably the answer they have to back. <clears throat> I'm okay with that. All right. Um, again, just kind of serving as some reminders here since we're just kind of getting started on Cal 2 class here. <clears throat> Back in the swing of it. Let's do this one. Now, 
f of x equals the tanch squared of x. Remember how we did this one? Or the trig, we did a uh, similar one for trig, tangent squared. Yeah, if we've got a uh, power of a, uh, well in this case a hyperbolic function, what typically we did with the trig functions was, or my recommendation was, that's a nice way to write that, but as far as doing the derivative and other stuff, mathematically, it's better to think of that, isn't it, as the tanch of x squared. Write it that way because, yeah, then it becomes obvious. You got a chain rule, <coughs> inside and outside. So the derivative here would be do the outside, bring down the power, inside stays the same. New power is just one. <clears throat> then we do the derivative of the inside. Well, that's where our new stuff comes in. Tanch. What was the derivative of it? I already erased it. It was the seat squared. So hyperbolic secant, seat squared to dot. Of course, I have to write that one power, but okay. All right. One more of those, just for fun, I guess. <coughs> Let's see here. What about g of x equals cosh 2x cinch x squared? <coughs> yeah, so it may not always be obvious, but just like with cosine and sine, you need that argument. You need something you're doing the cosh of um, and cinch of. So the 2x is the cosh uh, argument and the x squared is the cinch. Um, <clears throat> but what we've got here, what have we got here? We've got a product. We've got a product. And so when we go to the derivative, we've got to use our old uh, product rule. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, those rules won't go away. We'll always have those for derivatives. <clears throat> All those rules follow whatever the function is. All right, so cosh. Um, start with it, the derivative of it. Uh, let's see, derivative of cosh. Yeah, those are very nice. Um, <coughs> derivative of cosh is cinch. But, it is an inside and outside thing for that derivative. The cosh is on the outside and 2x is on the inside. So what else would we need there for the derivative of cosh? Yeah, you got to do the derivative of the inside, which is just 2. Since it doesn't change in the product rule, you have to alternate those. So you just carry it down and then rotate that around, do the cosh, leave it alone. And then derivative of the cinch, which again is chain rule, uh, cinch of x squared. <coughs> derivative of the cinch is cosh. Inside stays the same. Then derivative of the inside. Yes? So we get that? <coughs> yeah, so I wind up with a cinch, and another cinch, and a cosh, and another cosh. However, no way to combine those because their arguments, the stuff inside them, they're different. And so not really a whole lot we can do with that. They usually write the hyperbolic stuff um, behind. So <clears throat> this is probably how you'd see the answer in most places. Put the two in the front, put the two X in the front over here. But as far as the cosh and the cinch, no, we can't. Can't combine those. Uh, uh, particular cosh, two coshes, but yeah, you can't combine those. My point to uh, no way to combine those. Can't multiply those insides. All right, any uh, problems there? Okay, well. <clears throat> Uh, as far as the antiderivative side goes, um, really, you know, just the basics, um, they're fa fairly nice. 
if I'm talking about the integral of cosh and the integral of cinch, both those are really nice <coughs> because of their derivatives of one another. And so integral wise, they're the integrals of one another, the antiderivatives of one another. So yeah, if you integrate cosh, you get the cinch. Let's see, and you integrate the cinch, you get the cosh. Now, <clears throat> other nice hyperbolic integrals, of course, be the integral of the secant square, uh, seach squared. That'd be a nice one, right? It's gonna be the tanch, because the derivative of the tanch is seach squared. Antiderivative, the antiderivative then of seach squared would be tanch, so the integral there would be that. So, you know, <clears throat> there's some nicer hyperbolic integrals, um, but these are the, I guess, three, let's say, that we'll focus on maybe uh, potentially could come up in homework or test situations. Um, <clears throat> anyway, all right? So, for now, anyway, um, let's just uh, let's just talk about this one. <clears throat> okay, so. The integral of cosh is, is nice, um, but it's cosh of x is nice. If you've got the cosh of 5x to integrate, of course, what do you got to use? Our old uh, standby integration technique that we always want to try. You know, we're going to learn a lot of integration tricks, techniques as we go along here. But um, for those that aren't direct antiderivative integrals, the U substitution is our go-to. <clears throat> Always want to try, first of all, can I do this with U substitution? And the answer here is yes, yeah. And the parentheses help us out here, of course. U, sign U to the, what's in the parentheses, DU then would be the derivative of that times DX. I like to go ahead and solve this one for DX, so divide by five, and you got D over five. Make those substitutions, and uh, yeah, this is a fairly nice one. I don't <clears throat> think they'll get too uh, too hard on us as far as uh, what we want to integrate or the ones I chose for you to do. But anyway, <clears throat> um, you know, it's the same same stuff. You're just doing it in, with uh, hyperbolic stuff. Okay. Yeah. So so now we we do have just the cost of just the, the variable, in this case we've changed it to u, but cosh of u is cinch of u, antiderivative. Then we've got the one-fifth there. So it's one-fifth cinch of u. But then, of course, change that back. Change it in that step. Okay? Sound okay?